YouTube, Dawson Ryder here. Welcome to my review for MMPR and TMNT 2, The Streets, or The Sewers. I mean, that last part's made up. But we do have our second crossover here after our very successful first one. As I've mentioned numerous times before, I wasn't that excited for the original one just because I'm kind of crossover burnt out, uh, but it very unexpectedly won me over, and it was really enjoyable. I really liked it a lot. Had a lot of good chemistry, interactions, and story. A lot of fan service -y crossover designs, but ones that not only did I like, but in my opinion were weaved well into the story and made sense for it. And this very much so continues that quality. I was quite excited for this after not being as excited for the first one, and I'm happy to report that I feel like this just picks up right where we left off. I mean, literally in terms of story it kind of does, but I just mean in terms of the general pacing and quality and what I enjoyed about the first one. I feel it really picked up from there, and also kind of expands. I think the first one was rather simple, you know, sticking obviously to the sort of the main core elements, the rangers, the turtles, their main villains and mentors, and this one I feel is a little bit bigger in scope as we start to introduce more, primarily in the turtles world to be honest, and this one, you know, in this one we get to see Rat King and uh, almost said like Kang was Kang in there, uh, but uh, Baxter's in there, and you know we have Casey Jones. Karai makes an appearance. Um, with MMPR, I think sticking to MMPR season one, we have less to expand in. Uh, but I certainly hope that maybe as we go through this crossover and possible future ones, we might expand more. And I think that something that's really cool about this too is that it really feels like these inhabit the same universe. So some of these crossovers can feel just kind of like a dumb what if if these two met. You don't really have to worry about the worlds meshing too much. But with these characters interacting and them interacting with these other's mythologies, it honestly feels like they're part of a shared universe that could be very cohesive, and I wouldn't mind seeing that explored in the future. But anyway, we pick things up and we kind of set up what is rather a cliche plot drawing this, you know, forward, which is, you know, the classic case of character goes missing at the beginning, they search for him, and when they find him, they turn on him, and it turns out they're brainwashed or something. Not that that's bad by any means. I really enjoyed this issue. I think it works really well, but it's definitely a cliche through line for the plot. As you start with Casey and Karai fighting, and then he's looking for Shredder, who had disappeared, and then something mysterious attacks them, and then that's kind of your fade to black. You know, that's where we cut off for that, and then we catch up with the Rangers and the Turtles. And I think this really picks up one of my favorite things about this crossover and, you know, just the concept of it is they really nailed the interactions between the Turtles and the Rangers. It's a very organic chemistry and it, for me sometimes it's hard to enjoy a chemistry of reading because it, you don't get to see the performances of the characters, whether it be voice acting from a cartoon or actors. And I really do feel the chemistry and the interaction between these is done well. I mean, it has both like some funny, you know, interactions between them bouncing off the different personalities, but also some meaningful meaningful ones that touch on the similarities and the differences between the characters. And you have some immediately fun and nice moments, like you have uh, Mikey and Donnie in these hologram forms of humans in uh, the juice bar trying not to get noticed. You have April and the girls discussing like, oh, whether she would be on our toes about Rita and Shredder returning and stuff like that. You have some more nice moments with Billy and Donnie, who obviously connect for uh, very, you know, obvious reasons. And he's working on uh, some Ranger Tech and the Shadow Morphers, and you get to see a little bit of Billy's uh, mech suit. You have this nice scene between Jason and Leo as they commiserate over being leaders and, you know, kind of the struggle of it and also, like, not wanting to admit when the, the person on their team that they sort of butt heads with is right. And that immediately cuts to Wrath and Tommy that are paired together, which obviously they fill some a really nice parallel there. Well, a really nice parallel there, where of course I would think about interactions and parallels between Leo and Tommy, or Leo and uh, Jason, excuse me. But I've never really can considered that much the parallel to be drawn between Leo and Raph and Tommy and Jason, which was kind of interesting. I don't remember if the old issues highlighted that, because I remember most of the time Tommy being undercover as the foot soldier. But I just, for whatever reason, thought about it more when they drew attention to it in this. They're investigating the disappearance of Casey and other disappearances, which lead them to stuff like the Rat King, who reveals that uh, it's a ranger that's been doing these, which will lead us into the end part of the issue. Something that was funny, though, is when they're investigating, there's this other character with them that kind of looks like Jason, and my first thought was like, oh, so Jason's here now. And then I forgot it was, uh, uh, I forget this dude's name, like Paul or Terry or Tyler, there we go, uh, who was in the last comic as this random friend of Tommy just introduced, where I'm like, did I, like, Mandela effect? Am I supposed to remember this dude? And even now, I'm like, who the hell is this now? And I'm like, oh yeah, it's the Tyler guy. He's done them to this investigation of his missing appearances that I guess have been caused by a ranger. And then at the end, you have Goldar. I think it's Goldar and Bebop and Rocksteady uh, breaking out 
I know Baxter Stockman is there, and this ultimately leads to this confrontation at the end between the Rangers and the villains in this fight. And that's when Casey shows up again, and Raph's like, what the hell, man? Don't do that to us again. You scared the hell out of us. He's like, sorry, bro. And he's like, why don't you guys go fight? Just turn your back real quick and check out this fight. And then he hits him. So again, the cliche, character disappears, comes back evil, but not just as he brainwashed in some way, but he morphs into Ranger X, which is the suit we saw quite a while ago um, from the covers when they released him because comics don't want to have any surprises. They want to telegraph all their surprises in press releases. So I really wish that it wouldn't do that. I'm weird about spoilers when like I don't consider something to be a spoiler as soon as it's released, so I'm considered pretty cutthroat about it, but it just bothers me that they don't want to have surprises in the comics when they'll telegraph their biggest plot twists in a press release. Like, again, I've said this before, but imagine if they did that in Empire. Be like, okay, yeah, we're going to release a press release that says Vader's Luke's father before the movie even comes out. Anyway, point is, he shows up as Ranger X, he kicks some ass, and he leaves with the villains, and that's the cliffhanger you end on. And it's really well done. Even though it's a cliche plot, it's a really good entry issue. It sort of reminds you of all of the chemistry and interactions between the Rangers you like. It has a really nice blending together of the worlds. Again, I feel like these mythologies really exist well together. And it's a really solid and awesome cliffhanger to have Casey show up as a Ranger. And it's a great suit. Probably one of my favorite suits. I really have liked Honestly, all the crossover designs they've done for these so far. Uh, but this is another really great one, and I really like it a lot. I hope we get a lightning figure of it. Uh, but yeah, really solid start. I enjoyed it. Uh, four out of five for me. Um, like I said, cliche plot line is the through line, but it's still very enjoyable. And it really uh, sets up everything nicely to the point where I'm really excited for the following issues. It's just such a stark contrast to where I was when the first one came out. But what did you guys think of our first issue? What did you think of Ranger X? Let me know in the comments as always. Until next time, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and climb the steps and ring that bell. See you notifications for my videos. Dawson Ryder, signing out.